Boxing has a lot of belts. Too many belts, in fact. From the WBC trophy belts to the WBC diamond belts, they even added a WBC trophy belt onto the upcoming tank fight this Saturday. So this video is me just trying to explain the boxing belts, how they work, and why there are so goddamn many of them in boxing. Now first things first, I want to direct all you guys to TJ Loves Fight's video on boxing belts. It'll be linked in the description below, and he explains the four main belts in boxing and their history and much more in his video, so make sure to check it out. I remember watching this video a while ago, and that's also kind of what gave me the idea to make a video going more in-depth into belts and why there's so many in boxing. I'll be quickly explaining the belts, the four main belts that he explained in his video, and we'll be more explaining why there are random belts in boxing, as in the diamond belt and the various WBC belts, as mentioned before. Now let's get into the basic belts in boxing. Boxing has four belts, the WBC belt, the WBA belt, the WBO belt, and the IBF belt. These are the four basic belts in boxing and are recognized as the boxing championships of the world. Now if a champion has all four of these belts, they are the undisputed champion of whatever weight class they are in. An example of this being Devin Haney, who was the undisputed lightweight champion. There is also the lineal championship, which is the man who beat the man which goes all the way back to when the first title was given to John L. Sylvian in the heavyweight division when there was considered one true champ and anyone who beat the man became the man, which continued the cycle. The lineal championship is not an actual belt, but something that is awarded to fighters by beating the man of their division and is kept track of by the fans. There's also the unified champ, which is a fighter who holds two of the major sanctioning titles between the four major sanctioning bodies, which basically means if a fighter holds two or more of the basic belts in boxing, they'll be a unified champion. A good example of this would be Anthony Joshua, who was a two-time unified three title holder. Now you probably noticed in that Haney photo, he also had a fifth belt that he was holding. That belt is the Ringtime Magazine belt. The Ringtime Magazine belt isn't won via a fight, but rather awarded to fighters through the Ringtime Magazine. It's usually awarded to high caliber fighters, so anyone with this belt is usually a top dog in their respective division. Now there's also the IBO belt, which isn't recognized by the big four governing bodies, being the WBA, WBC, IBF, and WBO, and it's an independent organization. The WO belt is given out one per weight class, and is usually put in fights where it makes sense within the rankings. Whoever becomes the WBO champ keeps defending it until they lose it, or they vacate it, which again causes it to be placed in a fight where it makes sense within the rankings. Moving on from the IBO belt, there are also interim belts. There are interim belts for each one of the four sanctioning bodies. Now, what interim belts are, they are just placeholder belts that are more like a second place championship that puts you in the number one contender spot to fight the respective sanctioning champion of whatever interim belt you do have. This case being Ryan Garcia when he won the interim WBC belt and he was, at the time, set to fight Devin Haney. The fight never did happen, but if Ryan pursued it, he could have fought Devin Haney because he became the number one contender because he had the interim championship. Now, there are also WBC silver belts which are just WBC interim belts, but it's silver instead of gold. It still just puts you as the number one contender. It's the only one of the four sanctioning bodies that does this, so I felt the need to mention it. Now, here's some tomfoolery in boxing with the WBA belt. You see, the WBA belt has two championships, a regular and a super title. The way it works is if a fighter has the WBA title and wins either the IBF, WBC, or WBO belt, they get moved up to the WBA super champion. The regular title then becomes vacant for two contenders to fight for. This is stupid if you ask me because it adds more belts for no reason and stops the best from fighting the best as why would you want to fight the super champion if you can beat the regular champion. It also kind of backhands the guy who decided that he wants to try to get more belts and try to unify the belts but he gets moved up to the super champion and another fighter gets to fight for the quote unquote regular belt which is basically just the belt he already has. Moving on from that mess, we get into a bigger mess with the WBC belts, starting with the before-mentioned diamond belt. The WBC diamond belt is given to a winner of historic fights like when Floyd Mayweather fought Manny Pacquiao. In more recent times, Noya Inoue was presented this belt when he fought Louis Neri in the Tokyo Dome in Japan. This was a historic fight considering that Neri was banned from Japan after he failed to make weight for a rematch with Shinsuke Yamaka. Also, the fact that there hasn't been a boxing match in the Tokyo Dome since 1990 kind of made sense to why they added the belt to the fight. There's also the WBC Franchise Champion, which is a title awarded to dominant champions that have represented the WBC well and have remained as top performers in the sport. If I'm being honest, it's a totally useless belt, because why would you reward a dominant champion with another belt if 
the reason why you were giving them that belt in the first place is that they are defending the belt that they already fought for. That makes no sense at all. The WBC just wants to add more sanctioning fees to these fights. Now, what is a sanctioning fee? Every time a belt is on the line in boxing, the promoter has to pay sanctioning fees to the organization that belt is from. So if the WBC can add more belts onto the fight, then the promoter has to pay them more money. Now onto what seems like the infinite amount of WBC belts there are. Now these belts don't even mean anything. The WBC just adds them onto big fights. For one, to add another belt because another belt always looks nice on a fight. Two, because they want to add more sanctioning fees to the fight. But for the trophy belts, it seems they add them to every big fight. I mentioned before they added a WBC trophy belt to the upcoming tank fight. They also seem to add one every goddamn time Canelo fights because he has so many of them. That's like six of them and that's not even all the ones he has. There are so many of them in fact. Did you know they made one for COVID? I don't even know why they made this. I don't know if this was a legit belt or if this was just something they made for fun, but they made a COVID belt. And I don't know, this might just be something that a news article made up because there's not that much information on it. There's just one article that I found. So it just might be something that made up, but it's crazy that it doesn't even seem unlikely that they would make a belt for this. But that's all for this video. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to like and subscribe. I really appreciate it. And comment below what you guys think boxing should do about its belt problem and whether they should start following a one belt model like the UFC.